All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, quick video on the uh, steering servo for the nose wheel. Um, it's held in by uh, four three millimeter bolts with lock nuts and some washers. And uh, I use these little servo holders, carbon fiber servo holders that you can I have. I usually get them with um, uh, helicopters that I build. Uh, I had a bunch left over, so I like to use them um, when reason why I use one of the servos is a lot of times it'll, it just, I think it distri distributes the load on the servo um, bracket itself instead of just having a washer um, against the plastic here to, and it kind of as you tighten it you know compresses that and puts grooves inside the plastic so this is just something to help hold it a little bit better uh, once it's in there because we don't use the uh, not using the rubber washers um, and the uh, aluminum grommets that uh, normally do uh, so the servo arm that they supplied was too long so I had to trim a little bit off each side uh, use their clevis for the portion that attaches to the wheel or yeah the uh, strut and then I put a um, ball end on the other end which will ta attach to the servo servo arm using a like a 332nd bolt or something like that whatever it is um, so I opted to do that because um, the if I did a double clevis like this the server that I'm using is too it's too thick uh, for that so it won't uh, it wouldn't work um, but yeah they drilled my uh, little arm here off centered well it's supposed to be basically perpendicular you know to the wheel and they kind of drilled it a little bit further that way so it, it makes the uh, the servo arm uh, too long uh, easy fix just trimmed it um, so but uh, it's hard to see but the servo uh, it's going to go in from this direction so you'll come in the top here with your bolts and like I said it has lock nuts on the back side uh, but these will slide on I'm going to drill the hole out a little bit these, those holes are a little small yeah I'm going to drill them. here we go I'll show you with this one Yeah, I might drill the holes a little bit, but anyways, you get the picture. Uh, the servo, pl the carbon plate will go on, and there's a lock nut uh, to hold it in place, and uh, we'll go just like that. It's even gonna be, gosh, wow. Yeah, you can see it's kind of hard to see there, but servo arm's way too long. I may have to, I'm gonna have to get another servo arm. That one's gonna be too long, regardless, unless I offset way over here granted these things don't have to move much but I can, I'd still like to get it perpendicular to the servo yeah I'm going to get a new servo arm that's too long I don't know anyways and as I'm going along um, I plug the servo in I'll kind of show you here since I'm doing the S bus setup I uh I go through and program the servo each time. That way I don't have to pull anything back out to reprogram the servo because you basically are assigning each servo uh, to a channel. Uh, plug in into the back with, with mail end to this little terminal box. Plug the servo in. And then a battery source. You can Most people do this with a wire harness, but this is just all I had laying around. Plug the battery in. Go to your system menu. Scroll over to S Bus. There you go. It's kind of hard to see. Then you go to Recall, which is right there. It. All right. Then it pulls in the servo, basically what it is right now. Channels one. Uh, the smoother is off. The soft starts off, and this is kind of the default setting that you get. Um, with the um, 
with the smoother setting off, I've noticed that the servos are real ratchety. Uh, so I always turn that on, and then it goes smooth with your control. Uh, nice and smooth like it should. Also, a neat feature I like is turning the soft start on. Um, that way, when you hit, when you turn your battery on, uh, the, ser the servos don't jolt uh, to that centered position. They slowly center. Looks neat. Plus, it's just easier on the servo. And you can do all kinds of crazy stuff here. You know, you can change your midpoint in the servo instead of doing sub trims. Uh, you can do, you can change your travel. Uh, basically, do anything you would in the radio. Uh, with the servo you can also kind of a neat thing if you want to set something up as far like a like a delay or just make it move super slow like if you wanted to have the like a servo on a on a, on a flap or a, a speed brake or something or a canopy and you wanted it to go real slow you can put a speed control in there uh, by that setting which is kind of neat um, there's a few things I'm not sure what they are but I figured I don't need them anyways uh, let me back out of this. I'll go ahead and write that. Uh, I forgot to see what channel this is. Let's see. Go back to linkage menu, function, and I already assigned it a, you know, it's a two a aileron, two flap, a double elevator, one rudder. So it'll assign everything per channel like it needs to for the, the fastest uh, setup. So uh, rudder is going to be four and I'll just go ahead and make this one. Hmm. I think I'm gonna make this ten. Well, no, let's see. Yeah, I'll just make. Uh, yeah, I'll go with ten, and I'll assign basically link ten to channel four, which is your rudder later on. This way, I can actually have a uh, center point. And you know, it kind of adjusts the steering without it adjusting the rudder at the same time. So we're going to go 10, go servo, recall. Alright, there's everything we had before. Channel, change it to 10, enter, and then go over to right. It didn't do the typical. Huh. Alright, let's recall it. Nope, see, it didn't change it. Sometimes if you hit right and you don't see the little hourglass, it won't take it. So go back and change it to 10. Go to the right. Hmm, for some reason it's not taking it. Huh, let's try recalling now. Okay, it took it. Alright. Yeah, back out. Go back in, try it one more time. Recall. Yeah, alright, so now it's channel 10. Smoother's on, soft start's on, and that's all there is to it. Let me just unplug the battery. And servo. And now, no matter where I plug this servo in, it will always read channel 10. So, it's kind of a neat thing with the S bus, but, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble everything. Uh, make a new, make a new uh, push rod um, for this, and uh, uh, do a quick video once it's assembled. Uh, I'm gonna leave all the videos on on my YouTube page just because it's a pain in the butt copying and pasting from YouTube to to RC Universe. But I'll do the pictures on RC Universe, and you guys can just. Uh, go to the YouTube page, which I I put on the uh, the build thread, and everything will be on the left side, like I said before in the last video under the playlist. Uh, but you guys take it easy. I'll get back uh, get this finished. Oh, heck, while we're here, let's I'll show you this. Um, I mentioned the mod that I was doing to the fuel tanks, um, and there it is. It's a Real thin aluminum. You can bend this stuff with your with your hand. Uh, I just use the metal shears, cut four square or three squares, um, mark the diameter, uh, drilled some holes, used a Dremel to kind of smooth them out, make them uh, nice. They're going to be a little bit larger than the hole uh, in the uh, Kevlar tank.
with that so I can I'll just basic once everything's dry I'll take a Dremel and size it perfectly to the uh, the hole of the aluminum that way when you put the uh, rubber stopper in it's it's pushing against that aluminum wall as well as the as the Kevlar and that'll keep it from cracking I drilled four holes in each plate just to allow the the glue to kind of push through it and expand over it and I just kind of wiped it on each corner just to kind of give it an extra hold uh, to the Kevlar uh, roughed up the Kevlar tank and the back side of the aluminum plate cleaned it with some acetone and used some uh, E20 uh, 3M E20 high saw which is what I use on everything um, there are three tanks uh, this one let's see let me back, see if I can back this up oh, wrong way yeah it's about as far as it I'll back this up uh, these doesn't really show, it only shows this one tank as being your main tank it's a big tank um, probably a gallon or, or so right here uh, but then this tank will sit on top of it and they do fit this tank sticks up but when you put the, the top hatch on it it'll be you know hidden by the painted area uh, and this will be the two main tank, that's a lot of fuel I don't know how much it is yet but I haven't I'll have to fill them up and weigh it but that's a lot of fuel and then the, the third tank um, which is this guy is a smoke tank um, it's got a smaller hole in it because I'm using the uh, the uh, stock Skymaster stopper um, and I didn't it doesn't need to be high flow because it's, it's just a smoke tank uh, but I drill in everything else for high uh, high flow uh, like I said in the last video but this is drying and once it dries I'll take a Dremel and uh, um, cut everything to fit perfectly for the stoppers and then I'll go ahead and plumb the tanks with the uh, the clunks and everything but uh, that's it for now uh, maybe I'll get one more uh, video before uh, it gets too late I gotta go I start back to work tomorrow early mornings and uh, so hopefully my servo arms and stuff will come in tomorrow and I can get back to uh, the hold up uh, putting all the uh, control surfaces in and uh, after that it'll just be starting to put everything inside the jet and getting it together overall it should go pretty quick after at that point but uh, uh, you guys take it easy and uh, I'll talk to you later